The 540 is brought to you by StarCityGames.com Weekly Sale. Go to StarCityGames.com slash sale because this week you can tap into some great deals with 10% off of non-basic lands. And if you are trying to build a cube of any kind, you know, as we have talked about on this show so many times, that non-basic lands are critical And if you're also like me and like Ryan, you want to add as many non-basic lands into your cube as you possibly can. So 10% off of non-basic lands all week until Monday, July 5th at 10.59 a.m. 10% off of all non-basic lands. Go to StarCityGames.com slash sale. The 540 is also brought to you by Coalesce Apparel and Design. If you want to get the coolest magic t-shirts and hoodies and stickers, go to coalesceapparel.shop. And if you find something you like, use gift code SCG to save 10% off at checkout. That's coalesceapparel.shop. Nobody made what they wanted, so they made it themselves. What's up, everybody? Cedric Phillips here, stopping by real quick to let you know about one of Star City Games' newest podcasts, The Receivables, hosted by yours truly, alongside my partner in crime, of course, Patrick Sullivan, where the two of us discuss magic sets, both past and present, from top to bottom. On every episode of The Receivables, you're going to hear us talk about the facts of a set, the mechanics of a set, the cycles of a set, you know, the boring stuff, before we get into some crazy stories of when we were playing magic during the times that the set was legal. Uh, We've got a ridiculous award show where we give out awards like the Char Rumbler Award for Weirdest Card in a Set, the Oko Thief of Crowns Award for Best Card in the Set, and a whole bunch more. Before we finally decide, hey, what card won the set, and what letter grade should we give the set? It's a whole lot of fun. We're having a blast recording them. Hopefully you have the opportunity to listen to it, and you enjoy it as much as we're enjoying recording them. Where can you find it? StarCityGames.com or wherever else you listen to your podcast. The Receivables, every single week here at SCG. Welcome back, everyone, to the 540, where, still fresh off of Modern Horizons 2, I have now gotten a chance to play with some of the cards in person, of course, as always. I'm Justin Parnell, which you can find at jparnell1 on Twitter, and my co-host, who hopefully has had a chance to play with some Modern Horizons 2 cards. Oh, yeah, I, I've been playing with them. Uh, my name is Ryan Overturf. You can find me at Ryan Overdrive. Um, sounds like people are really coming around on Dragon's Rage Channeler. It's a card that uh, I tweeted pretty quickly after a set release that I posted the only record in a modern league with that card. And now people are picking up that uh, it might be one of the best cards in the set. It might be the best card in the set. I'm going to say it's the second I'm between second and third. Yeah, I, I, I think best card in the set is like kind of exaggerated, but that, yes. that is a literal sentence that's being tossed around. It is, it is. And I'm sure, I assume the people, but you know, and that makes sense because you don't play Dragon Rage Chandler in a deck that you play Urza Saga in. So you would not know that there's a card that's better. Uh, amusingly, the big legacy deck right now plays Ragavan and Urza Saga. It's just a disaster. Yeah, well, that's, well, willfully appropriate, I suppose, for what is going on in this set and <laughs> uh, appropriate for the amount of testing that was done with Urza Saga. So I guess uh, you know, circle the whole wagon. <laughs> yeah, that card is totally bonkers. So, uh, yeah, I have finally got a chance to play. Uh, I did an eight, eight person draft over the weekend, which was wonderful. It's actually the first in-person cube draft I've done in over a year. Uh, and it was everything I dreamed of and more. I posted I posted my deck on Twitter. Uh, it was quite exceptional. I did not drop a game. Almost lost one game. Yeah, I saw your deck list. It looked like just kind of an A, maybe A plus reanimator deck. It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's the kind of deck that's just like losing with that deck has to be infuriating. <laughs> yeah, I, I never i never felt you it. wouldn't know never, never lost. you wouldn't, I wouldn't know, know. Yeah. <laughs> welcome back yeah it, though. it was uh it was quite powerful i got to uh the main card i got to really spin the wheels on was uh uh arc and or excuse me 
What is oh my Ar- gosh. Archon of Cruelty? Ar- it is Archon. Archon, yes. Archon of Cruelty. I was bl- I literally blanked on the name. Uh, yeah, Archon of Cruelty. And uh, I can I can confirm, uh, even though we were 99.9% sure, uh, this is a slam dunk cube staple for reanimator until the end of time. I cannot imagine that there will be enough cards to edge this out as just an exceptional creature for every reanimated at reanimator deck going forward. And the fact that it's not legendary means all that other nonsense that you don't need to make sure it's not legendary for hits it. That's it's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I cast Wonderful. it off of a uh, cabal coffers in the modern cube over the weekend. Yeah. Mm. It's a pretty solid one. It's a pretty solid one. Yeah. I was very, uh, very happy to get back to cubing. It was like, I was literally just ex- so excited playing, like just holding cards in my hand and like, I don't know, it, it's, I, I've forgotten how much I've missed it, I think is really what it comes down to. Yeah, and that was something like, there were various stages kind of early and as the months and, you know, full year, et cetera, passed in the pandemic, where I like pick up just a deck of cards and shuffle and flick them around and just sit there thinking, I used to feel something, you know, and then you get back and you actually start playing with people and then it all just comes right back. Yeah, I mean, it it really did. And that's what it, that's what it felt like. That's I I was I was overjoyed. It's literally the most fun I've had playing Magic in like 16 months. That's and awesome. I'm not even exaggerating. I'm not exaggerating and it's uh it's it's crazy to say because it's not like Magic has been gone, but it's been gone in the form that I grew to love it and and now that I'm having you know have a have those experiences again is is wonderful. It reminds me why I'm here doing this podcast and doing all the other Magic content that I do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, digital is just not the same. It's not. I feel soulless. I still play it because I love magic, but it's <laughs> it does it does not have the same feel. Anyway, we're not here to talk about Modern Horizons two. We've spent uh, I think an approximate uh, seventy three hours over the last uh, three episodes talking about that. We're here today to talk about commander cubes or multiplayer cubes one or the other or yeah. both <laughs> often both uh, sometimes a little one or the other but uh yeah this is something maybe sounds a little weird given our backgrounds but i i've played quite a lot of commander cube a little bit of non-commander multiplayer cube and uh yeah. y- you have not uh, not not a single time as you would expect uh Ryan, who is uh, known less for Commander, has played significantly more. I'm who known more for Commander has played none. <laughs> so if had you mark that one off on your bingo card. Uh, <laughs> yes, I've never I've never had the chance to play a a Commander cube. I don't I don't know a person that is like in proximity to me that has one, mm-hmm. which is kind of how it works, right? You know, I if you either have someone that has the cube for you to play with so you can gain the experience. You got to build it yourself. And I have not built it myself. So by virtue of that, I've just never had an opportunity. I thought I was going to have a chance over the weekend. Uh, the person, which was a friend of a friend of a person they knew at the store did not show up with their commander cube or show up at all. So we just did a regular cube draft, which is the aforementioned arc of cruelty reanimator deck. But uh, I'm still licking my chops for when I can have a chance to do that because those are two formats that I enjoy, obviously Cube and, of course, Commander. As, like, you know, like I said, uh, I think most people that are listening to this podcast have heard of me before uh, associated with that format. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have a friend who I don't, he has taken it apart at this point in time. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up putting it back together, but he maintained a commander cube for a few years and it was just massive thousands of cards in his commander cube. And he's trying to facilitate a lot of different archetypes. And his experience was he was one of those people that had, you know, like the commander giant tackle box where they they rolled up. Yes. The big yellow box with the clear top. Dozens of commander decks and... He had a lot of uh, issues. This is actually a problem that I have with Constructed Commander where you have that power level discussion and people toss numbers that don't mean anything around and the decks just don't line up in interesting or fun ways. And he started just having a box that he would 
randomize a commander deck. He said, okay, well, Progenitus mm-hmm. is my commander now. I'm going to shuffle these cards with these lands, and that's going to be my okay. commander deck. And uh, from there, it just evolved into this huge project. It became a cube. That brought me back as a lapsed commander player because even though some of the games would be lopsided, that's the nature of drafting your deck, there's variance. We were still all drafting from the same pool, and it was a really fun experience. You got to like sit down, do the drafting thing, and needle people. How is it still in the pack? Blah, blah, blah. Play some games with commander in a way that it wasn't like somebody showed up with stacks and ruined your whole night. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's really the great thing. Uh, and that's the thing that actually draws me to this the most is if you are all playing roughly the same format, obviously some people can draft decks better than others, and that's just how magic works. You are, are someone or whoever is the owner of the cube is setting the tone for what what everyone's going to be playing. And there's not going to be this large discrepancy, which is such a battle when you're not playing with like a consistent group of people Mm -hmm. yeah and we just progressively would scale back on the kind of cards that led to one player taking the majority of the game actions or stuff that we as a group agreed was not fun which is very similar to rule zero enforcement and commander where you have that conversation what do we think is fun what do we think is not fun so uh, over the course of the commander cubes history we had a number of Maybe not infinite combo decks, but long turn combo decks that did end up winning the game that turn and uh, Mm -hmm. any extra turn effect kind of got cut over time. And I remember one of the last times I drafted the cube, I had Nezahal Primal Tide and it just kind of observed that every turn I controlled it was miserable. Yeah, (laughs) I was just drawing like seven cards and it could never die or whatever. Yeah. But uh, just yeah. progressively over time, just moved in this direction where you know we were all having a pretty good time, and we all really liked to uh, Zancha each other. That's that that like is probably oh, my yeah. favorite commander specific card ever, and that was the environment where I really got to play with it. Yeah, it's a that's 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 a, just a super fun card in general, mm-hmm. and that's like uh, you know that's a that's another thing in addition to kind of dictating the power level evenly uh, amongst everyone else is. There's so many commander cards that I, I generally want to play with. And this is this is talking as me. I probably have played... I'm not saying I've played the most unique commander decks of any person in history, but I'm, I'm definitely in the top 1% and probably even higher than that. Mm-hmm. Just by virtue of, you know, Commander versus lasting 250 plus episodes. I play a different deck every week. I have my own personal decks. I've been playing the format for a decade, so. But even then, with that, there's still cards that I want to play with, and and I don't necessarily always have like a deck to play them in. And mm-hmm. I feel like that's also kind of the meaning of cube is like I'll take all of these cards that you really like, and you can build a cube around them. And so this is the other section of those cards that don't fit into a cube because they're multiplayer focused or mm-hmm. better in multiplayer environments. And then this is this is the home for them. Yeah, definitely. Um, I don't remember which episode it was, but on an earlier episode of the 540 here, we talked about the card Book of Rass and that yeah, and a yeah. selection of cards like that that just aren't very powerful but are very cool show up in that commander cube. And we had a lot of fun playing with those. Um, a card that it's pro- so there's been a pretty heavy escalation of what the most powerful commander decks can do and a lot of the commander stif- specific commanders the legends that come out on these products um mm. we actually ended up kind of soft banding them in the commander cube there was a pretty funny jokes so like uh we said i don't play a lot of commander right and i drafted like this jun deck with a bunch of tokens and i was like oh i want to try that card prosh that seems like a cool Token commander, my friend Andy's <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. yeah, I remember my first commander game too. I was like, okay, okay, I won't, I won't play it, whatever. <laughs> There's yeah. some stuff that's just like way better than the other stuff you can do in the commander slot there. But then uh, with the commander queue, we got to play really old cards like Thanos's coffin and have them be really incredible. Oh, that's that's so great. Yeah, I want to. I just want to cast. I want to be in a game where I can just like straight face cast like blatant thievery. <laughs> oh yeah you know like i th- those that's a card that at this point now like people don't play blatant thievery in their commander deck because it's not 
it, it's not it's it's no longer stealing three permanents for eight mana is no longer good enough in just regular commander. If you're doing that, you're you're getting to like expropriate mana, and then you're instead of taking three permanents, you either take three turns with three permanents or some combination of the two. So, uh, yeah, being able to just to play with play with those cards, unloved stuff that just doesn't fit anywhere else. This is seems like the perfect format for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's largely my approach to cube generally. Like I'm always trying to build a cube format. Those cards I like to play. Maybe I don't have an outlet to play them in other formats. Maybe I don't like the matchups you have to play in other formats. So I'm trying to just capture the gameplay I really like. And then commander cube or a multiplayer cube can allow you to have some cards. Like you said, blatant thievery can really shine there. Um, Just a ton of cards that don't really show up anywhere anymore. Yeah, a lot of lot of old school cards. I'm sure a lot of cards from my from my youth would be great there. And I certainly I certainly see the uh, the concept of excluding some commanders. And I I, I generally agree that the co- that most of the commanders found in the uh, pre constructed commander decks are like so uniquely powerful for what they are doing. Like a lot of extremely powerful legendary creatures have come out of those decks mm-hmm. not necessarily all of them but it they they seem like they wizards or the people that are designing those are sometimes can struggle to find a a middle ground because they're usually either very good or 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 very bad mm-hmm. with very 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 little in between and that's uh the question you're gonna want to answer if you maintain or are interested in starting up a commander cube what what's the power level that you want to have there keeping in mind that if you have the very powerful decks that can be cool if everybody's deck is very powerful yeah but if somebody just kind of stumbles a little bit in the draft some element to their deck doesn't come together or they just think that a lower power level is more fun then the game is not going to be great for everybody if somebody shows up with one of those really high power commanders. Uh, one of the games we played one time, I just like drafted mana, start cards that draw cards, played the Locust God, and <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> somebody cast a death match. Uh, that's a card from Onslaught. If you don't know, it's a four mana black enchantment. Oh, when a creature enters the battlefield, that creature's controller have a, has another creature get minus three, minus three. So just every creature died constantly until I like locust got it, made a bunch of tokens and kill everybody. And it's just like how much game was really played there, you know? So yeah. <laughs> finessing that kind of stuff, having those conversations about how high you want the power level to be. Um, if if you think that it is more fun to be cutthroat and take out, take out the person who's missing their land drops, or if you want to keep everybody in the game so they can do some of their own thing, making sure everybody's on the same page is going to be a much bigger deal. I think that's already probably underdone for regular cube. I think that more cube groups should have a more open conversation. More cube designers should invite a more open conversation with their players, but then it becomes even more important if you're playing a multiplayer game. Yeah, I, I think it's it's so crazy because you're right, and it and cube is still better in that aspect than commander as a format is, <laughs> which I think is just the the lack of communication that happens. And a lot of people, so a lot of people talk about like, oh, let's put power level on like a point scale. Like, what are you from like one to ten, or like what turn are you winning by? But those are also insular that. It, you're never going to get the answer to the question that you're looking for without having a legitimate conversation with the people that you're playing with. And if you like the question I often ask is how are you trying, how are you trying to win the game? And if the, and if, and if the person's answer is, well, I don't want to tell you that that's an answer also. Now that's something that doesn't happen in cube because again, you're going to have access to everything and I don't want to tangent too much about like my feelings on commander and, and rule zero and uh, and and things that have to do with external communication prior to the game, but this is certainly an area where it's uh, it's more critical because it's gonna it's gonna define what the makeup of your cube is mm-hmm. in full and the entire experience, top to bottom, drafting and playing. Yeah, and that's something that I figured out after playing a small number of games and. You know, you can adapt around this kind of thing because you want everybody to be enjoying themselves. But 
when I was into Commander however many years ago, if somebody was stumbling, they were going to take the hit from my Sword of Fire and Ice because it was free. It's, it's the perfect crime, Justin. Yeah, and yeah. That doesn't fly when everyone's there to play a fun it's long game. Perfect crime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's true. Uh, and there's, you know, there's always going to be a political component anytime you're playing multiplayer magic, and that's part of that's part of the draw of that. I think for for most people, if you don't want to play, if you don't want to have that like social interaction be part of the game, then you're probably not going to play those formats. You're going to play a one v one format. Mm -hmm. whatever it is it's generally not going to be something with more than two people exactly yeah so like what do you you know what is what is your goal do you want are you looking for fun are you looking for just like everyone just gets to play with like big silly effects and the winner of the game doesn't matter it's all about like trying to craft the coolest deck and make the coolest moments are you trying to uh be as as competitive as possible in a multiplayer setting doesn't necessarily have to mean you're trying to replicate CDH, but maybe you are, are replicating high powered commander where the goal is to win and everyone is OK with getting hit with the sword of fire and ice when you're stuck on two lands. And that's just a part of the game because you're just going to play another one. You're going to draft up and everyone's going to be fine with that. Mm -hmm. Are you trying to replicate a, a, a draft format? Now, right now, we really only have. Uh, Commander Legends as kind of the true draft format, but there also are some other ones that are multiplayer esque formats like uh, Conspiracy and Battle Bond. You know that you can you can certainly pull from for ideas of how to how to how to put this together and how much do you want to replicate the actual format of Commander? And that's and that question is cascading. Yes, because there's a lot of different factors that you can do, which which we will cover some of those. Yeah, the quote unquote format of Commander. Yes. <laughs> yeah, in a proper sense. So, all right. Well, I, I think I'm ready to, to get in and start asking these some of these questions. Yeah, let's dive in. Boom. All right. We're going to take a short break. Come back. More Commander Cube. Have some extra cards laying around that you want to get rid of? Go to StarCityGames.com slash sell. It has never been easier to turn your cards into cash, or if you're looking to outfit your cube or commander deck with some new favorites, get a 30% trade-in bonus when you choose store credit. No matter what your collection looks like, we have a method for you. Want to see exactly what every card you have is worth? Check out our buy list. Don't have time for that? Stick it on a box. Send it to us, and we'll make you an offer with our ship and sell program. Or if you want a more personal touch, make your way to the Star City Game Center, Roanoke, Virginia, to sit down with a buyer just like the old days. With the fastest turnaround time in the industry, get an offer in under four days when you go to StarCityGame.com slash sell. Selling has never been easier. Hello there from Dominario's Judgment, a weekly podcast for Star City Games with me, Dom Harvey. And me, Ari Lex. Where we bring you the latest, greatest, and downright weirdest things Modern has to offer. Want to know what to expect for next weekend's events? We've got you covered. Do you want deep breakdowns of the hot topics and decks in modern? We've got you covered. Just want to make sure you don't miss the latest nonsense before your opponents teach you a lesson about it in the queues? Oh yeah, we have definitely got you covered. And when Modern Horizons 2 blows the ceiling off this format, as it surely will, we'll be here with you to pick up the pieces. Find us every week on YouTube, Spotify, or wherever else you get your podcasts. Or if you want to head over to StarCityGames.com, we'll be right there alongside all the great content from all your other favorite content producers. All right, Ryan, the, I have a, a what I feel like is probably the ultimate most important question to ask before we, we kind of get in any further. Mm -hmm. And we've been talking about Commander Cube, but you don't necessarily have to play a commander cube. You could simply play a multiplayer singleton cube and kind of do some of the same stuff. Where does, where do you lie on that? So I've played a little bit of non commander multiplayer cube and the cubes like that, that I've played and that I've seen, they're actually kind of popular among more casual players in recent years. They tend to be based off of battle bond or conspiracy, those multiplayer sets. Um, actually kind of a funny story. More, one of my brother-in-laws played magic for a few years, overlapped with the first conspiracy and he ended up selling out of his collection, you know, uh, when he and my sister started having kids and they ended up selling them through my store. 
I like going through and he had this conspiracy cube and it just like didn't really resemble anything that I would think of as a cube, but it's just like cards from conspiracy. And if you yeah. like that booster draft set, that's that makes sense. That's the kind of cube you would build. Uh, for me, I don't like that as much. There was like a lot of stuff like four mana creatures that don't really make much or any value that attack and block that don't really line up with my multiplayer philosophy. Um, if I'm putting a card on my multiplayer deck, it has to kind of make sense with the baseline understanding that I have three opponents and that card mm -hmm. has to matter against all of them, which uh, is kind of a cutthroat. That's like a CDH kind of mentality, which uh, you know, I should state that explicitly. But also, I, I don't like the non-commander stuff quite so much. And then also, commander just kind of has this built-in emotional resonance where it's a lot cooler to shuffle up and say, this is my Moldrotha deck, then shuffle up and say, this is my Sultai pile of cards. Yeah. Yeah, you're saying like you're, you know, you're you're in for the multiplayer stuff, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're excited to cast Canal Courier, if you even know <laughs> what that card is. Yeah. It is a card in Conspiracy. I think it's, it's uh, maybe it's in Conspiracy too. Anyway, anyway, uh, it's in one of the Conspiracies. It's a 3-5 that gives you the Monarch for six. <laughs> what a powerful card yeah yeah well you know like i'm saying like you're saying like you kind of you, you don't want to play with them you don't have to play with embarrassing cards mm -hmm. uh yeah but i i think this is like to me this is a really big question and this is really tough because i think that most people's draw to this format is going to be combining commander and limited and if you don't have the commander portion where you have a a commander, you know, a singular legendary creature or thing that can be your your commander that kind of identifies the rest of your deck. I think that's going to I don't want to say that's going to be like a turn off for people, but I think it's going to make most people less interested in the format, even if the gameplay is almost identical. Mm -hmm. And that would be a concern. That would be a concern to me. Uh, and I don't know if it's a deal breaker enough that I would want to try it out the other way first in fear of they're not having an excitement because it commander such a ubiquitous format at this point that if, I, I feel like I've, if I just told, you know, I have this multiplayer cube, singleton multiplayer cube, and they're like, you mean a commander cube? And I'm like, well, no, it doesn't have commanders. And they would just say, well, why not? <laughs> There's also a really fun thing. I mean, this is subjective, fun is subjective, but I think just that turn zero reveal this is my commander. Now you know some things, but not everything yeah. about my deck. In particular, with some of the really linear or one note commanders, like if I flip yeah. up Jorkadian, it's like, okay, that's a Boros deck. It's got some creatures, yeah. it's got some artifacts. That person's gonna try to attack me around turn 10. They're probably gonna be completely out of resources. So let them have their fun for now. Yeah. Yeah. That is, and that is a fun component, especially when you're drafting. Mm -hmm. You know, because like you, you know, that's going to be that's going to be different every time. And that's a big that is a big moment. And that's a fun moment. It's fun moment when you sit down and you're like, you know, I sit down and you're all everyone's getting their decks out and you're kind of looking around to see what everyone else is pulling out. And you're like, OK, OK, OK. Uh, and, you know, knowing that you've all drafted and everyone like has their deck and like you all everyone's like, all right, three, two, one, everyone flips over their commanders. That's fun. That's a great moment. And that's like part of the reason that I would want to play this format. Mm -hmm. My first, uh, so probably close, to, uh, over f between 15 and 20 years. Uh, probably, we'll say 15 years ago, maybe a little bit more than that. The first time that I played a non- this is before I started playing Commander. So Com Commander didn't even know of at the time. And I guess what I had, what I call, I just called the, the big deck. And what it was, it was a group of 500 cards that were all sleeved together. Uh, and everyone played off of the deck. And you had a shared graveyard and the shared library. But you would play off of the deck and there were lands like there were lands in the deck, basic lands, non-basic lands in the deck. And you would just play multiplayer and you could play this with any amount of people. And I would just swap out the cards for like little two card combos and such uh, for things to work. 
every basic land had like cycling of uh of two like two colorless at the time so if you drew a basic land you didn't want that you could cycle it for two um and that was like the first that was the first multiplayer limited type format that i played that i think is the closest analog to this Mm. but i took i mean that's been taken apart you know literally i think the last time i played that was in probably 2005 maybe 2004 (laughs) yeah it doesn't sound like the kind of thing you would keep together once you have discovered commander well, yeah, I discovered Commander and then I discovered Cube shortly after <laughs> yeah. that. So, yeah, it <laughs> has gone on to uses. bigger and better things. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but so anyway, the point that I'm trying to make is uh, that was a really static number. It was 500 cards. You'd shuffle it up. You'd play with some of them. But with but with a Commander Cube, you alluded to this earlier and you were said it's thousands of cards. I don't even know what that means <laughs> because you, you could literally when see some people when they're like, oh, it's thousands, they could mean like it's like 600. But you might mean it's 2,450 cards. And I don't know. I believe that it was three or four thousand cards. Oh, my God. At its largest size. And um, holy crap. My friend who maintained it, uh, Andy is his name. He would he he's he's a math teacher and so Mm. he's very familiar with how horrible everybody is at randomizing things so you know that phase of cube draft night where like help me shuffle and like three people just grab a stack of cards and shuffle the hell out of that stack of cards but aren't randomizing the cube whatsoever because they're not mixing piles together at all yes i i understand i hear you and i i echo your frustration so the cube was three thousand or four thousand cards but you would never see it altogether um i don't know the rationale for why this was called but he would he carry around like one of those 800 card long boxes he'd call it a slug of the commander cube so he would go ahead and randomize the entire cube on his own time so he knew that it was actually done well and then he would just bring one or two drafts with him in those long boxes and then we would shuffle up that way yeah andy can't trust anyone else to randomize the cube i i can understand and respect that Mm -hmm. very very smart I have shuffled my own cube prior to a draft. Uh, I would say more times than I have gotten assistance. And I don't even mean like at home. I mean, like someone sits down and they're like, I'm going to shuffle. And I'm like, no, you're not. You're going <laughs> to shuffle this stack of cards. You're going to shuffle this 80, these 80 cards. Yeah. And then you're going to split this in half and you're going to shuffle another 80 cards and you're not going to do anything. So I'm just going to shuffle the whole thing and you can just watch. <laughs> yeah. They just pick up a stack of cards and they shuffle and they stare into space and it's yeah. like, okay. You're not shuffling. This isn't your deck that you're shuffling. <laughs> like, you're not doing anything. I am now convinced that you could have fun just maneuvering and fiddling with a stack of cards for the next three hours. However, <laughs> I need to randomize the cube. Yes, exactly. So, yeah, that is, I'm glad you have that shared experience. And I'm sure that most people that own cubes probably have. Mm-hmm. That I'm just like, look. I there are some people that are like people that are my friend that I know know how to randomize a cube, but if I don't know that you do, I'm not going to have you help. Mm-hmm. You can just sit there and watch. I'll I might I might make some snide comments about the fact that you're just sitting there, but I still <laughs> would like to do it myself. Just for what that's worth. Yeah, same page. Okay, so thousands. Okay, so thousands is a lot. That was more than I was expecting you to say. I was I thought it was like thousands, like a single thousand or two thousand, but no. Okay, so what is? Oh, I feel like most commander cubes would be smaller than that, just I, by I, yes, <laughs> just by the nature of of the cube. Um, but it also would have to be larger than a regular cube. We're the 540 here, and that would seem too small for a commander cube. Because yeah. I would imagine that your decks are obviously also uh, bigger than a 40-card deck. At minimum, probably 60. So this is a point that I believe you wanted to bring up later in the episode, but I think it's necessary to answer the question about cube size. So I'm going to bring this up now. now. So you have to answer the question of what are the commanders for your cube going to be? Now, 
Andy had a trade binder filled with basically every legendary creature ever printed. We called it the commander menu. And we didn't mess around with drafting a commander because that's one of those ways where a player can have a deck not come together. We tried to minimize, minimize situations where one player is watching the other three players play. So just being able to select your commander, and it never happened that two people wanted the same one, never came up. So if you're thinking that as a gotcha, it never happened. It never would happen. Don't worry about that. You just okay. choose your commander. The way you're drafting, you're not going to end up in the same commander. I see and... you haven't played a ton of Magic with Stephen Green, but we'll <laughs> skip that. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you got some jerk that's just trying yeah. to rock the boat, whatever, just let let the baby have its bottle. Just let them yeah. do the same commander or whatever. Non-issue. Okay. Got it. <laughs> and so you just you get to choose your commander, and that worked for the really large card pool because there's just a ton of different effects, like every ramp draw spell a ton of unique swingy high mana effects but then you're probably going to want to do something smaller because having a 3000 card cube that you only walk around broken into five different segments is a lot of upkeep and it's also a lot to go out and acquire a copy of every legendary creature ever printed so more likely what you're going to want to do is select a small number of commanders, maybe a large number, but a smaller number. And also maybe kind of abide by what they do in commander precons, where you have a bunch of commanders that care about similar things, and you can kind of choose, okay, well, I'm a blue-red artifact yeah. deck, but I can be one of these three different commanders. Maybe I'm feeling brutaclad, whatever. And then cater the cards in your cube to those macro archetypes and kind of make things work that way. I think that, that that's a good way to do it. And if I did it that way, I probably would still do the menu because if I want to play the one artifact commander, but I have the other, that diminishes my experience a little bit. And it's kind of stupid to draft them because there's only so many anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's how I would do that. And that's a good way to get the number of cards in the cube down where you say, I want car cards that care about these macro archetypes and we're going to go from there. Yeah. And that's, you know, obviously that's similar to how you would handle a regular cube, but you get to be a little more freeform, I would imagine, with this. Yeah. So it's kind of like doing the gold section thing where you say, OK, um, green, black cares about cards in graveyard. I'm doing spider spawning oversold cemetery. And you just kind of look at what green, black's doing and say, OK, these are the green, black commanders that make sense and have those included. Yeah. So how much does how much does the 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 breakdown of of gameplay work into this because you know if you're do if you're talking multiplayer you're generally not going to play this cube in, in a 1v1 setting mm -hmm. so i mean is the minimum three four is it always in pods of four is it larger than that we, and I, I know this is not necessarily specific to your experience but like i imagine this is something that comes up quite frequently it, uh, yeah, that, that has to be a big issue. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of talking about this massive cube built by a math genius and kind of realizing yeah. how blessed I was to ever be in its presence. And uh, by extension of that, if we had four, that meant that there were five or six champing at the bit. Like, we never had a problem filling that last seat. We liked games with four. We never really went beyond that. And part of that is because of another house rule that we had which we can talk about that later. But I, I like games of four for my multiplayer games. Uh, mm -hmm. A question that you and a lot of other people have been asking um, about cube drafts, specifically it's come up a lot about two birds, is how do you play with three? I think it's totally reasonable to play a commander cube with three. Like, there's no problem there. Like, that's the reason I don't do that with other cubes is I want to play one-on-one. -on -one. It's really awkward with three because someone's always sitting out. Three is totally fine for multiplayer magic. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that I... That totally makes sense, of course. Um, so let's see. I guess even in a even in a commander cube, five is still the worst number. Yeah. Uh, so we always joke when we have five, and by we I mean I always suggest, and nobody else wants to do it. I, I suggest that we play Star Magic, but nobody ever yeah. wants to play Star Magic with me. Yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> I am familiar with Star Magic. 
where you can only attack the two people that are uh, opposite you and not the two people that are to your left and right? I think you can attack the other people, but you win if the two you, people opposite you are eliminated. Yes. So you probably Correct. only want to attack them. That is generally true, yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. You win you win when you have eliminated your two enemy colors, as it were. Yes. Yes. Um, I have played that before. Um many, many years ago. And uh it it the concept seems significantly more fun than the gameplay. <laughs> and let me tell you, um, especially if people um now this was also prior to to the my knowledge of commander so there was certainly no table talk of how prepared people were to help or hurt other people so mm -hmm. some people just brought decks that were just decks you know of casual cards and then someone brought a deck to make sure that people didn't die you know the people beside them their friends and that was a concept that i had not strongly considered mm. anyway we have talked this is, <laughs> I, I, I can't believe yeah. we've talked I mean, so much in the year 2021 about star magic on the we one won't end, bring it up again on the one end this is way too much about star magic on the other end are you familiar with secret partners no i don't know secret partners <laughs> so just well now you're gonna tell now you can tell me this <laughs> so secret partners is a way some of the uh, commander players at the store would uh, play multiplayer commander that we got into a little bit where you have five and you are all randomly assigned a team there's two teams of two and the wolf the lone wolf and <laughs> it comes out pretty quickly who's on whose team unless i'm in there because i just like deliberately try to muddy the waters and always kind of play like i'm the lone wolf because it's that's how it's fun to play secret partners but that's a way you can play multiplayer with five okay that sounds more fun than Star Magic. It's like a it's like a little bit of uh it's like a little bit of werewolf in a game of magic. Yeah. And the kind of the way it works is like you just need to eliminate the other team and the lone wolf. So Yeah, okay. But how does Lone Wolf win? The Lone Wolf has isolation? to beat everybody else, yeah. Okay, well that sounds that sounds fair. Yeah, I mean it is not balanced. You know, the, yeah, it's the five player magic. Like, what are you, you're doing your best. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This, <laughs> That's how this I feel. Whole, like I, I wasn't actually saying that sarcastically. I was literally saying like, yeah. I mean, I guess that's five, it's five people. That someone's got to get that into the stuff. Yeah, I mean, you're just alluding to the fact that trying to make the gameplay good is a Herculean task. And I'm, I'm thinking about like when I first got into Commander, we would play a weekly game, and it was like between five and eight people just whoever showed up and i just don't know how i ever sat down for an eight player game of commander that seems just completely obscene to me now i will i simply wouldn't do it i i am hesitant to do five i have regrets yeah i hesitant to do five four is the sweet spot i'm three is great too okay so my last kind of drafty related question uh and don't hold me to that but the last one that i have right now how does the actual draft work? Commander Legends, this, the set that came out in December, was 20 card packs, and you took two cards per pick. And I think, I'm not saying that they like got it right, but that seems slightly more right to me than doing it with one card per pick. I am a fan of the double dip mechanic there and i think that yeah. commander cube would be a great place to implement that and i know mm -hmm. some people have worked on and currently have access to commander cube so it's going to be more recent than my experience i never did it after the existence or the idea of commander legends so i don't really have experience with that that seems like a cool way to do it what we did and this is part of the cube being massive is we drafted 12 nine card packs and okay. the reason you do nine card packs with four player drafts, if you've ever done a four player draft, you probably are familiar with the pack size. Maybe you haven't thought too much about the reason for the number, but the reason is the back end of a pack is a lot less exciting than the front. The, you, the first pick is what you want. So you just do more packs, you get more first picks, you are excited about more of the cards that you will draft. And mm -hmm. that's kind of how we did that. And the, the two picks that does do some of that because you get two first picks from a given pack and then naturally you would increase the pack size you had more looks at more cars that you found exciting so i do think that that makes some sense 
Um, also, we were playing the 99 card decks with the 100th being the commander. I know that some people okay. do things like Commander Legends, which I believe was, was it 60 or 80 card decks? I think it was 60. It's 60, it's 60 card decks. 60 card decks and Commander Legends, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and that's another and way... That yeah, you you're picking from 60 cards, so it's roughly the same as what you're talking about. Sure, and that's another way you can dramatically reduce the size of your cube so you don't need to curate thousands of cards. You know, that, that that's very burdensome. So yeah, uh, reducing sure. the deck size will reduce the burden on Commander Cube. Yeah, yeah. So for yeah, Commander Legends, you are doing uh, three packs of 20. So you are, you are drafting 120 cards, or excuse me, uh, you're you're drafting six you're drafting 60 cards for your 60 card deck uh but you're getting a look at a significant amount more than that um i imagine you would want to do that more you know that's more of a more of a function of a uh an actual factual format where you're not going to have lands as a a you know that's not a thing that you draft they're not all over the place in most in most limited formats, this hmm. relative relative to cubes anyway, or sometimes right. they are, but they're very bad. And that, that was another thing that uh, Andy had kind of a house rule about that I thought was really nice for just helping people have more consistent decks. After we drafted, then there was a land rotisserie draft we would do where oh, I love that. I think it was 50 total lands. I think it was five cycles, but they kind of fluctuate a little bit. But I want to yeah. say it was fetches, shocks, duels, bounce lands, and then one other cycle that tended to fluctuate. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. I think that's probably a pretty good, a pretty good breakdown somewhere along the lines of the Commander Legends. I definitely think that doing the double dip pick is probably where you want to be for a number of reasons. Uh, one of those being the the speed of the draft, especially since your decks are larger. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, it's just gonna, you know, everyone likes drafting, but if you're if you're drafting that many cards one at a time, you're you're really not gonna enjoy drafting <laughs> as frequently as you might normally. You you have to make a day of it. You gotta make. That's a good way to put it. Okay, uh, Ryan. Any any other portions? Uh, any other questions on this portion of of the cube setup, the draft, etc. Uh, yeah, so we touched on a lot of the broad strokes things, and I gave answers that pertain to my specific experience, but I just want to reiterate that you want to keep in mind, what is fun for me and my group about selecting a commander? Are you interested in the commander menu, or do you just want to have to draft that legendary creature somewhere in the draft, or do you want to have a separate commander draft similar to that separate land rotisserie draft where you got to get your commander that way? Some people like that. It's a little more cutthroat. It uh, means less often you, you get a little more of the non-game thing just because you reduce agency, you increase variance. So that's why mm -hmm. I don't like that. But what you like is what matters. We're talking about you are fun. Um, what size of decks do you want to play? How long do you want to spend drafting? Do you want to double dip or single pick? And uh, make it your own. That That's a really important note. These are some good notes. But uh, when it comes down to it, you got to spend your time your way. Okay. That's well put. So let's take uh, one more break and we will be back in just a moment. What's up, gamers? Taking a break from the pod here to talk to you about Star City Games Premium. Now, I know many of you are already premium members. That's awesome. You're awesome. Thank you for that. If you are not already enrolled in SCG Premium, we need to talk. You are leaving a value on the table for $7.99 a month you get access to 5% off of Magic Sealed product, 10% off of all Magic singles, 15% off of supplies. Now I know that I am talking to a lot of cube owners here. I know that you're gonna buy more sleeves. You know you are going to save this money right back on sleeves alone. So that's reason enough for you to enroll, but I am not done yet, not by a long shot. You also get tons of exclusive content from a fantastic stable of writers. We're talking about Jerry Thompson, Paulo Vitor Domina Rosa, Patrick Sullivan, Autumn Burchett, Brad Nelson, Sheldon Memory, Ross Miriam, Todd Anderson, Shaheen Sarani, Michael Majors, Ryan Sachs, Ari Lax, Dominic Harvey, Cedric Phillips. The list goes on and on. My stuff, you can get that every week for free. You're welcome. But now I am asking a favor. 
go ahead, get enrolled for SCG Premium. Go to starcitygames.com slash join hyphen premium. Sign up today and let's get back to the podcast. Now, Ryan, you had said that your experience uh, was with the commander menu where your friend had every copy of every legendary creature ever created and even some that didn't. (laughs) <laughs> that were from the future. Now, if people don't have uh, a, the the full menu in a time machine, how would we go about doing commanders? I know we could, uh, similar to a the land draft that you do externally, I know that uh, people have done a commander draft where there's a pack of just commanders. And this can either come at the beginning or the end of the draft. Uh, and obviously both of those kind of put the the whole context of how the cube works in, in different perspectives. So first of all, you don't need every commander to have your own commander menu. Many restaurants are very successful with limited menus. <laughs> and yeah. if, you're okay. intrig- if, you, if you're not hooked on the concept, just take a second, pause the podcast, say the sentence out loud. May I see the menu, please? May I see the commander menu, please? And if that's not satisfying to you, then we, we differ, but you know that that that's my last it's my last shot at it but it is um, very satisfying it is very satisfying it's a really great just in joke for the group but um do you have before well i you know before we on tangent um do you feel like is there any restaurant that comes to mind that just has an astronomical menu of just a hundred different items uh, that are well, not mediocre. not a yeah yeah. It, I believe that you are alluding alluding to the cheesecake factory. Yes, you have correctly identified it. <laughs> it is the cheesecake factory. Oh man, that is great. That is great. I'm so glad you got it. I was gonna. I was. I wish I had a card that I could turn over so the listeners so the listeners could know that the cheesecake factory was in fact the restaurant that i was referring to if you will turn your menu to page 41 you can see our sandwich <laughs> yeah. options yeah oh glad we're on the same page about that one okay <laughs> uh but, okay uh some people want to be a little bit more deliberate both about maintaining a smaller reasonably sized cubes and also about the kind of commanders you want to support and have your gameplay. And that, that can help a little bit with the balance and making sure that you are abiding by what you and your group think is fun. And I'll just reiterate what I said kind of about selecting commanders for that. You kind of want to iron out what your colors and color pairs are doing and just make it so those commanders are thematic with that. And w- once you do that, it just makes sense to me logically to do the commander menu and select the commander you want because it's kind of goofy to draft that because once players are drafting against each other it seems super unlikely that both players want the same commander and it seems a little bit pointless to draft against each other on that yeah yeah i i I get that i get that i think some people do like the commander graph first and then you have to draft around your commander but that's what i that's what i was gonna say that's such a massive restriction like it's easier if you do the 20 card packs particularly the 20 card packs with the double dip with the two picks um that would be really difficult with smaller packs because you're just gonna have packs that don't have any cards that you want and if you're just married to a commander early on and yeah you can draft multiple commanders but like we're talking about making picks where it's like, okay, well, this can go in this deck and this can go in this deck. And I, I hope to at one point uh, wants to play one of these decks and have enough cards for it. I, I, I like trying to make it so that you are the most likely to play a commander that you want to play. Yeah, the reason that I would specifically, and again, this is, you know, I'm speaking from, from, from uh, I don't say ignorance, but a lack of experience. But looking at this being the combination of, of Cuban commander, I think doing a commander draft at the start of the doing a draft of commanders at the start of the commander cube draft is combining like the worst two parts of both formats mm-hmm. where you are you're wanting the, the great part of cube is because you can have these these decks that are not consistent from draft to draft the decks the the themes might be consistent but the decks will look quite different 
Uh, and that's kind of part of the joy of Cube is you can discover new archetypes and put these decks together and you're kind of Frankensigning something together with a bunch of great parts. And in Commander, you are trying to create uh, these, in my opinion, these like fun moments um, and trying to get your deck to do a thing. Uh, and then when you have a Commander draft at the very beginning of the draft, well, not only are you kind of pitting the fun against the uh, well, I must I must decide the thing I'm going to do right now. I don't even get a chance to see what necessarily uh, what tools I might have to do the thing, but my commander is going to dictate the thing I'm going to do now. And when you're doing the commander draft at the beginning, you also are forcing archetypes 100% of the time. You mm -hmm. can't really let the draft advance organically because if you're picking a specific commander, you're like you need to be laser focused. Or if you're even if you're picking a bunch of commanders, you need to be focused on selecting one of those and then doing exactly that thing rather than doing the draft and then saying, well, now what commander fits this cool deck I've drafted, which is where the, the commander menu more comes into play or a draft afterwards. But honestly, at this point, I am just significantly more sold in the commander menu, not just because how it sounds when it comes out of my mouth, but also from a gameplay perspective. And just think back to the first time you ever played a cube draft. Just remember that sensation of, wow, this is a booster draft, but all 15 of these cards are good. The less true that that is, the less engaging, the less fun it is to draft that pack. The more cards that are just like grayed out that you're not really paying money, that you don't care about in the pack. Why are the other ones even there? You know, it's, yeah. it's just some extra information you don't care about. It's not fun. It's not engaging. Just having the most options possible, trying to have them all be interesting. You want to maximize that kind of experience. T totally. So what about from a rules perspective? Because there are some rules that you want to make sure that, that you cover going into this. Like, you know, when you get to the deck construction and gameplay portion. I would obviously, I would imagine just in most multiplayer formats, you're going to start with higher than average life total. Mm -hmm. I don't know why you would deviate from 40, but maybe based on your commander experience, that could be a consideration. I'm sure that is mostly what people are working with in any sort of multiplayer drafting format. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd expect most groups to stick with 40. If you are interested in particularly aggressive multiplayer magic, you can bump that number down. That's fine. Again, this is just something to talk to your group about. Um, if people seem frustrated that the games are taking too long and the life totals are too high, you'll generally know it. People are pretty cool with 40, though. That standard has been around for many years at this point. Yeah. Um, I think the base color identity rule is very good. Like what I was saying when you reveal your commander and it tells other people a lot about your deck, I think that that's something you want to maintain. I think. Having a green card in your Grixis commander deck or like a white card, uh, it just really diminishes what's cool about commander. Uh, however, in the show notes here, Justin has a follow up regarding the stupid hybrid mana rule. And that is correct. Uh, we're talking about then a very small number of cards that don't generally have very dramatic impacts on games. I am all for allowing hybrid cards in any deck that can cast them using their commander identity like i think it's totally fine to have a kitchen finks in your mono white deck like who is that hurting who gives a shit yeah. um that's probably you've something also, that you also to identified the very best hybrid card yeah and it's like not even that good <laughs> that's the point yeah <laughs> um i i also i'm totally cool i liked brawl a lot when uh, Brawl first rolled out, I, I played a ton of Brawl in the store. Um, rotation, of course, an issue. Um, the fluctuation from eight set standard to four set standard really took the wind out of the sails of the experience. However, just the 60 card singleton was a lot of fun. And I particularly liked being able to play Planeswalkers as my commander. I think that that's another spot where question. you can modify the rules. I think Planeswalkers as commander is super fun. And it feels really arbitrary that you can't do that to me. Uh, I fully agree. I've those are my two biggest uh, commander things. I think, uh, as Ryan mentioned in my notes, I have here um, the hybrid rules for commander are stupid. They are opposite of the rules of how hybrid works in regular Magic, and that makes absolutely no sense. 
and it is simply just arbitrary and someone has decided they do not like it and thus everyone must play with that. Mm -hmm. uh, you as a, as a cube owner can simply ignore that and do whatever the hell you want and I would encourage you to do so. Mm -hmm. uh, the second the second factor, wait, what was the second thing you said? I had a note on the, that. The uh, commander, uh, planeswalkers as commanders. Oh yes, planeswalkers as commander. Yeah, I think that um, I understand from a historical perspective why that is not generally allowed, but the longer and longer we go on, uh, the more and more it starts to feel like baseball, where we are simply not changing the rules because the people before us didn't change the rules. And the people before us were also us because it's the same people. Uh, <laughs> well, so the, the conversation is kind of funny because it's like, well, if we make Planeswalkers commanders, we'll have to ban cards. And it's like, the commander ban list certainly serves a purpose. It's good that there's a ban list for people that are playing with people that they don't know, but like there's just tons of cards that are legal in commander that are not okay. You can't just roll That's up I, with stuff yeah. just because it's legal and expect everybody to be cool with it. That's not how the commander format works. So I have said that to, to someone. It is, I will say it is a notable person. I will not say who it is. And I said, hey, I'm paraphrasing the conversation. Hey, I strongly believe that Planeswalkers should be allowed as commanders. And they said, oh, do you want to just play against Narset every time? And I said, no, <laughs> but I don't want to play against Armageddon every time either. And that's perfectly legal. I, I'm just, I, I'm not going to play against Narset every time. Because even if my opponent won't tell me what their deck's about, they do reveal their commander before the game. And if I'm not about it, I can just get up from the table yeah, because just play. that's just how life works. And that that's how the format is largely regulated in the first place. Not only that, but because you have the open information of the commander, I think it is even less of a problem than playing against Armageddon or playing against something that you don't like. Because it's not a secret. If someone sits down with Soren Markov and they can reduce my life total to 10 on turn four, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna know that it's not gonna. I'm not gonna be surprised when they when they cast that when they have do that the uh, Narset in the command zone. I know they're probably gonna cast that turn three. I know I gotta have a plan for it every time it shows up. But it's not the same as they have blue mana in their deck. At any point, they could cast the non-lethal Cyclonic Rift and ruin the game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I have a deck, a commander deck that's a Grixis deck. Um, that its official commander is Kess Dissident Mage. It's not a traditional Kess deck. Uh, it's like it's an artifacts planeswalker deck. So my secondary commander is Nickel Bolas Dragon God. And I have that in the box. And whenever I play, I'm like, do you mind if I play with Nickel Bolas instead of Kess? And I have asked this question probably about 40 times. Do you want to guess the number of people that have said, no, I don't want you to play that. I'd rather you play Kess. One person named Stephen Green. Nope, not even Stephen. The answer oh, wow. is zero. zero. The answer is zero. That's impressive. Zero. No one cares. Yeah. And actually, they're more, they're more interested in the deck. Someone asked me which commander fits the deck's theme better, and I said, Nickel Bolas, I just have to have Kess in case someone doesn't want me to play. Yeah, I don't know this person, but the fact that a person asked that question is awesome for yes, the record. This was at, this was at Command Fest. Uh, so this was at Command Fest 2019, back when uh, you could do such a thing. So, yeah. <laughs> no, that, anyway, I, lo I love that. I love everything about that interaction. Um, but this this is these are some gripes from uh, some some aging, grumpy magic players. But the, 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 the greater point here is that for your cube, you make the rules. So it is quote unquote commander. It can have fewer cards than commander. Maybe you want to draft your commanders. Maybe you don't. Maybe you want to have planeswalkers as commanders. You have the power to do that. If you think something sounds fun, do that. And that's really, that's really the biggest lesson here. Even more. And that's the, you know, we've said that with just regular cube and that is, is currently or is, or is consistently a a thing that you always want to think about, but I think it is even more notable here because you're going to be cultivating a larger shared experience just by the virtue of what the format is with more people, larger decks. You're running, you're you're, you're mixing two formats together, one that is obviously the most played format in the entire world, 
uh, and the other that is the greatest format in the world. Good combo. Two two great tastes that taste great together. Yep, exactly. So, Brian, do you have any parting thoughts on a Commander Cube? Uh, so I guess I said a lot of the stuff that probably isn't very helpful. I think they're good general notes once you have an idea of how to start and what you're doing. I think that letting cube designers and cube players know that they, they are empowered to kind of do whatever they want and to make and break the rules is important. Um, I think that maybe we didn't touch enough on how to get started and something that I tell a lot of people when they have an interest in Commander Cube, a great starting point is just look over the Commander Precons. Like honestly, if you just shuffled a bunch of Commander Precons together, you'd have a very good start for Commander Cube. And you're gonna influence this a little bit with what you think Commander should be. Maybe you want some one for one removal. I would err on the side of sweepers. Um, it's good to have some enchantments in, but then it's also good to have some enchantment destruction in, blah, blah, blah. Mana ramp, big effects. That's kind of the baseline. And those are the kind of notes you'll get if you look over those commander precon deck lists as well. Yeah. Uh, my, my parting thought is similar to Ryan's uh, initial, which is, you know, people maybe have listened to this episode and are saying, well, you didn't really tell me what to do. <laughs> and I, I would be honest, uh, you know, I am someone that was hoping to have like one, at least one draft of experience. I didn't get that opportunity, but even still, this is not a specific area of cube where I am an expert. I have a lot of cross knowledge with with Commander and I'm sure I could figure it out, but I have not had a chance to build one or play one myself. And I don't want to come on to this show where I feel like Ryan and I every week are very honest with our experience and how we feel about stuff and act as though I know more than I do about this format. That's why I sit here. I sat here for an hour and just post questions because if I was building a cube, these are the questions I would ask myself. And I think that asking yourself questions going through this process is, is more important than someone just telling you the answer to those questions. So hopefully you can listen to these things that we're saying, posing these questions and taking some tangential experience to create uh, the format that you want to play. And I can guarantee you, especially in a commander cube, that you will likely be able to figure it out once you once you start playing with it. Mm -hmm. Because like Ryan said, the, the most important thing is that you have the agency to do all of this, to have fun in the way that you want to do it. Um, and there's not one certain way to do that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, maybe this makes things easier for you. Maybe, maybe it doesn't. But a nice thing about commander cube is you don't have to sweat balance stuff quite as much as you would a 1v1 cube environment because uh, the politics of Commander really help iron a lot of that stuff out. You, know, you play with a card Great bunch point. and you decide that it sucks. Yeah, you can cut it. But uh, during the game, even if there's some permanence, like if there's some creature that's just particularly good or some enchantment that turns out to be not fun, you have three players that they have to answer to. So... That, that does help a lot with the balance issues. Yep, that's that's a great point. Great point. Okay, uh, I think that is all today for the 540. Thank you all very much for listening. Remember to subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon, Stitcher, YouTube, your local podcast app, anywhere you're listening to the show right now, and anywhere you can find podcasts. Uh, some of those places you are able to leave reviews. We always appreciate if you're able to do that, whether that's just a star rating or a little text review that says this is the greatest podcast I've ever listened to. You can paraphrase that if you want. You don't have to put that exactly. Uh, but, you know, anything uh, that shows your appreciation of, that the algorithm likes to consume will be helpful. Uh, you can find my stuff, uh, my other podcasts, at Think Twice MTG. Wherever you're listening right now, you can find that podcast there too. And of course, on Commander Versus, if you want to see me play Commander proper uh, without the cube environment, uh, that's on Star City Games and YouTube every Wednesday. Uh, I stream currently on twitch.tv slash jparnell. And you can find me on Twitter at jparnell1. Ryan, what do you have for everybody? You can find me on Twitter at Ryan Overdrive. Um, this week, my article is up earlier and we're recording later, so I will just tell you my article went up today the day of recording. It's about Chromatic Cube. Uh, you can find my articles weekly on starcitygames.com. That one 
It's not exactly Commander Cube, but designed by David McDarby on MTG Arena, is designed to largely emulate Commander. So you'll find a lot of cards that maybe you would want to put in your multiplayer cube there. Or if you're just interested in playing that cube as it exists on Arena, check that article out. I break that down for you. Uh, you can find my articles weekly, like I said, on StarCityGames.com and any updates on those on my Twitter at Ryan Overdrive. Wonderful. And thank you all again for listening to the 540. Uh, I know everyone has been very disappointed that uh, there's not a new set of magic coming out every week. I'm <laughs> sorry we had to take a week off, but rest assured, next week a brand new set is coming out yet again. And we're going to dive in to Adventures in the Forgotten Realms and start covering all of that in a similar fashion to how we have done Strixhaven and Modern Horizons 2. Can't wait. Uh, no rest. <laughs> Anyway, thank you all again very much, and we'll see you next week.